Today on Practical Church Planting, one template to help you preach clearer sermons. Welcome everybody to Practical Church Planting, where in 15 minutes or less, we'll give you practical tips, advice, and encouragement to help you plant and grow healthy churches. like it. Uh, my name is Brian Androsian, and joining me today is Dylan Dodson. And today we're talking about one sermon template to help you preach clearer sermons. So it's interesting. Up until fairly recently, I was kind of always like not much of a sermon template person. Like you just kind of write your sermon and do what you're supposed to do. But after, mm. you know, reading a bunch and trying to get a lot better this year, yeah. I just found, and maybe you found this too, we've talked about this on previous episodes, that when you preach a sermon, it's really easy for you to kind of feel like you have to tell everybody everything yeah, right away. Sure. And then it can just be confusing and nobody knows what's the most important thing. And so mm-hmm. kind of stumbled on this ter- uh, this template, Kerry Newhoff, uh, if you're familiar with him, his leadership podcast and some other people kind of tweaked it a little bit to make it our own. But I want to share with you a template that we've been using, that I've been using, yep. and it's helped this uh, our sermons here be much clearer, helped me focus a lot more in terms of like, okay, what what is, if I can't say everything because people can't remember everything, what am I going to take leave in? What am I going to take out? Yeah. It really just allows people to follow the message in the sermon much easier and walk away. Actually, if I were to ask, what was the message about today? I bet you most of our people, I don't know this for sure, (laughs) but I bet you most of our people, when you walked out on Sunday, on Sunday could not only could tell you what it was about, but would all tell you the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you know that it's actually connected. Well, so here uh, we'll tell you the template Mm -hmm. and then we'll give you an example of a message that that's coming up soon. How nice of you. Um, so here, here's the template. It's kind of, I think six parts to it. Mm-hmm. The beginning is kind of an intro intention, please. So, you know, a lot of times we've talked about this before too. You don't just want to welcome people as your intro. Yeah. You want to say something that's engaging, maybe funny, maybe get them to agree with you so that they're listening. But just doing that while that's better than nothing is not enough to you. What you want to do in the beginning is you want to engage people enough to, that they want to keep listening and mm-hmm. not just enough to say, okay, I'm going to listen to you because you didn't put me to sleep right away. Yeah. But I want to keep listening. And so the intro slash tension is you can share a story, an illustration, whatever, but you want to give them attention, propose a question that they're going to be like, you know what? That's a great question. I want to have that answered. Yeah, or that's something I was wondering. Right. Or it's like, well, no, I want, I already know the answer to that question, but how do I get that? Sure. Thing? How do I yeah. get this good thing? And so you want to be like, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to follow along. Okay. So in step one, give them an intro tension piece. Step two, uh, the step two through six are four questions that you want people to do you want to answer to help you follow along? Okay. And they are as follows. What do they need to know? Why do they need to know it? What do they need to do? Why do they need to do it? And then the last step is you want to end with the gospel. So let me give you an example of this. Okay. So what do they need to know? You set up the tension. What do they need to know? What is the main thing, in our case, the text, mm-hmm. saying? What yeah. is the main thing that our text is saying? I'll give you an example in a second. But that, that's what you want to answer. What do they need to know? So you kind of... That's what it is. And you Just talk about that point, there. whatever, but you, you're very clear about here's what people, here's what we need to know this morning. Right. You don't necessarily need to say, here's what you need to know. Here's why you need to right. know. It. Here's <laughs> what you need to do. Here's why you need to do it. But in your mind, it's helpful and yeah. you're answering those questions. So the first thing is set up attention that they want resolved. Then read the text or whatever it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. not whatever it is. And say, here's what, what we need to know. Yeah. And then you follow it up with, why they need to know it. And again, sure. that makes sense. Okay, here's what we need to know. Now, here's why it's important. Yeah, I want to know why it's important. And then after you say why it's important, then you then then you talk about why you then need to, what, what you then need to do about it. Yeah. So here's what you need to do. No, here's why you need to know it. Because we know this is important now, what do we do? Right. You give them something to do. In the what do you need to do section, you give them a bottom line, which we'll talk about, mm-hmm. which is the one thing that they can take away. So you tell them what they need to do, give them a bottom line, and then you tell them why they need to do it. Because sure. at this point, even if they're not sure about this Jesus thing and all that sort of thing, they're probably like, okay, this makes sense. I'm tracking with you. Yeah. What should I do? Or what do I need to know? Why do I need to know it? What What do I need to do? And then why do I need to do it? It makes it just it's just really easy to follow. Makes it flow. You talk about why you need to do this thing, why yeah. you need to why this bottom line is important, and then you always want to end incorporating the gospel into it. Now, some messages the gospel might be in throughout it, so yeah. you yeah. know you may you know how to emphasize it at the end. But we've made it a point to put the gospel as the end to make sure we're talking about it because what you don't want to do is kind of give people a here's three steps to do this better, or here to be a yeah. better person. Here's life lessons, but. In other words, if someone could implement your message and not be a follower of Christ, and have, you know, then then you're you're missing it. Sure. Like you want people in the, the day. It's about <laughs> right. what Jesus has done for us, and so you want to bring the gospel into it. A mm-hmm. because the gospel does speak into it, so it allows people to see how the gospel speaks into different things. Yeah. But it's also a reminder of if I do everything you're telling me to do in the sermon, but I can do it without Jesus, well then I'm, I'm missing yeah. the point. Um, anything you want to say about that before we give them an example? Uh, so I think it's gonna clarify a lot once people hear the example but one thing i'll add and you can you can actually speak more to this than i can but talk a little bit about how not just not just it helps you know in there people actually hearing 
and understanding and kind of internalizing what you're saying, but how it helps actually in writing the process. Yeah. Writing and, the message. And so the next episode that we come out mm-hmm. with, episode which will be episode 33, the one after this one, we're going to give you the behind the scenes of how yeah. we develop a sermon here at New City Church using this, but also how we plan the entire service around it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious. So, so listen to episode 33. Yes. I want to ask you, though, so yeah. we've probably followed this tidbit for a few months now. Mm-hmm. You're in there a lot doing stuff. Do you think that it's been more clear to you and more understandable as we go through the message? I do. I do. And, and we'll talk about, like like you said, we'll talk about this a lot in the next episode too, but I think it helps to have a direction of, like when you're actually writing the message, a direction of where to go with it. So it kind of keeps you on track from kind of going off on tangents, right. going off, like we talked about a bunch, but going off kind of just on like interesting stuff, but actually keeps on track of this is what people need to know. Yep. So while it helps in the writing process, I think it helps a lot in the delivery process yep. too. And it, and, I, and yes, I think it, I think I've seen people be a lot more engaged because you can see the entire thing is flowing from kind of, you know, point right. A to point Z or whatever, Makes you know, sense. it's flowing all the way down. It's not, you're not going kind of off on rabbit trails. You know, it all flows it's together. funny too. I've noticed, you know, since we've, I've kind of switched to this a few months ago that even, you know, the sermons that I make think that they were bad and they were terrible. Yeah. They weren't as bad because at least be following this kind of template because mm-hmm. it still made logical sense. It was still easy to follow. Yeah. And I found, cause people are honest. I'll be like, yeah, that wasn't as bad. People are kind of saying, yeah, it wasn't the greatest, but mm-hmm. you know, you're still able to follow. So I've even found even my messages that I was like, that wasn't as good. Following this template still made them better. Yeah. Than they would have been. And one, one thing I'll say before we move on is when this was like, when you brought this to us and kind of proposed this to staff and this is, this is a process we're going to be changing to, I think I was one of the people that was like, ah, this sounds kind of like we're going to be dumbing things down. You know, it totally. sounds it sounds very, and so I was kind of worried at first this is, that this is going to be kind of watering things down, yeah. you know, that like, you know, what do you need to know? What do you need to do? Or, you know, how do you need, how do you need right. to do, you know, stuff like that. It's just very basic. And so that's one thing that I was worried about when we were doing, but as we've kind of gone the past few months doing this, I think I've seen that that's not the case at all. All it yep. does is just make it a lot more cohesive. And I think it's for a lot of us too, you know, our, my, at least my tendency is to teach more than preach. And so mm-hmm. this again, allows it to be more applicable and preachable because the problem is not me is not dumbing it down. The problem often is saying too much. Right. And so this right. helps if that's you, is you as well, this will help you kind of be more clear. So let me give you an example of a sermon that we have coming up pretty soon. It is, we're going through the, I am seven, I am statements of Jesus in mm-hmm. the book of John. So this, I am statement is in John chapter 14, where he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So again, here's how this intro will start out. We'll talk about you know, something following the way. And here's the tension that I'm going to ask at the beginning of the sermon. Okay. If someone laid out a path for you that leads to life, would you take it? And of course, we'll use an illustration, that sort of thing. Now, the answer to that is not, is not, I'm not sure the answer to that. The answer is a yes, I want that. Sure. But the tension is, okay, how does, what is that? How do we do, how do we take that? Like, where is that path? How do we take that path? Yeah. Although automatically I'm like, yes, I want life that is full of joy and more, you know, purpose and meaning. Mm-hmm. So how do I get there? Yeah. All, all right, already you're kind of interested in. So what do they need to know? In this section, typically how we do it, is this is where the, the main part of the text begins. So mm-hmm. reading John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7, talking about the text, you know, doing the detail stuff, the work of here's what this means. You know, not, yeah. again, we don't make it dumb it down. The context, you know, that all your study stuff happens, what do, they need, what do they need to know? So you read the text, and then you end by saying, essentially, here's what they need to know, that there is a way to God. So normally, uh, for all these sections except the first one, you answer the question at the beginning. What do they need to know? You answer it at the end because mm-hmm. you got to read the text first. Yeah. So what there is a road or there is a way to God. That is what they need to know. Now, what do they need to? Or sorry, that's what they need to do. Sorry, what do they need to know? Excuse yeah. me, I've got my <laughs> thing right here. <laughs> now, um, why do they need to know it? Here's why they need to know it mm-hmm. because Jesus is the way to God. What do they need to? So what do they need to know? There is a way to God. Why? Do they need to know it? Because Jesus is the way to God. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like, okay, this makes sense. This is important because it has implications for me. If I want this tension point, this life that we talked about, I need to, I need to know that it's Jesus. So talk about that, give examples. And then you move to the section. What do they need to do? So again, if there is a way to God, if Jesus is the way to God, what do they need to do? They need to follow the way. Mm -hmm. Now this is, W, the capital W, you know, early yeah. Jesus followers called the way, and it'll be on the screens that way. But again, it, these these things often are self-explanatory. You don't, yeah. They don't need to be complex at all. So they need to, what do they need to do? They need to follow the way. At this point, I'll read John 14, 8 through 11, so read a little bit more mm-hmm. his context behind it. But they need to follow the way. We'll talk about why they need to follow the way. And then this is where the bottom line comes in. And the bottom line for this weekend, or for this message, is Jesus created a way when there was no way. Okay. So we'll talk about that. We need to follow the way, and Jesus created a way 
where there was no way. And that we're very clear about if you, here's what we want, you mm-hmm. want you to know this morning. Here's what we want you to take away with so that everyone's on the same page, yeah. again, and knowing, oh, this is what it was about, that Jesus created a way for us. Otherwise, there would not have been a way. It's yeah. not like one of the best ways or you know, one of many. It's like, no, if Jesus didn't do this, there wouldn't even be a way. Right. So that's the bottom line. Again, what do they need, uh, what do they need to do? They, or they need to follow the way. And then the bottom line is Jesus created a way. And then why do they why need, do to, they do need to do it? Because there is no other way to life. That's why. Again, I'll, I can show these all again. I've got my notes here. They're pretty small. What do they need to know? They need to know there is a way to God. Why do they need to know it? Because Jesus is the way to God. What do they need to do? They need to follow the way. Mm-hmm. And then the bottom line, Jesus created a way when there was no way. And why do they, what, what, why do they need to follow the way? Because there, there is no other way to life. Yeah. Talk about that, and then kind of end with the Gospels and saying how Jesus made a way, the death, resurrection, that sort of thing. But you can kind of see how that flows. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense, and you can go to newcityrd.com slash media if you want to listen to other messages about that process. But what it does, is, again, it, it makes it sense, makes it clear. It also makes it easier for you to use less notes. True. Because True. You, you know the kind of the main points. Yeah. And again, you're building it out. You're talking about the text. It's not about dumbing it down, but it's about giving people a, a map yeah. of like, here's where we're beginning. Here's where we're ending. Here's the tension. You know, the tension, you want to have a fulfilling life, a life of meaning and purpose and hope. You have to follow the way. And yep. you see that if you fall through. And again, it just gets people, it gets people writing more notes. It mm-hmm. gets people following along more because it makes coherent sense. And so that is kind of the template that we're using. And there's a lot of examples, again, that we have from this of how to do this. Again, you want to answer, you want to start with attention. What do they need to know? Why do they need to know it? What do they need to do? Mm-hmm. Why do they need to do it? And then you want to incorporate the gospel into that, at, you know, before you end, because again, it, this one obviously makes sense because it's about Jesus. Yeah. But other ones, you know, you got to make sure that the people can, if they do everything they say you did to do in the sermon, can they do that without Jesus? Right. Then right. that's, you know, probably not the best. So. And the, the good thing about this is, as, as you see from just this example, they're all like, <laughs> this might sound bad, but none of the points are super complicated. Right. You know, it's all very, it's all basic stuff. And then you can expound on each of those things. So it's all just, it's taking someone kind of where they are. Yep to where they need to be, you know? Yep. And one thing I like about the tension point, the tension question that we've kind of been been using more and more is I think it's important to set up at the beginning, kind of give people an expectation of what they're going to spend the next 30, 40, whatever right. minutes listening to. And so it, it, it does grab their attention, especially if you use it with a story. But also, I, th- I think there's something to be said for kind of knowing at least a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today, yep. not just we're talking about the seventh I am statement or the <laughs> sixth I am statement, but we're answering, we're talking about that, but we're going to be in doing that. We're going to be answering this question that we're all wondering, I think is a good thing to do. Yeah. And I would even say too, especially, I mean, you don't always have to use this template. I'm yeah. sure that there'll be times when we don't or I don't, but especially the more inexperienced you are, mm-hmm. I think it's even more important to have something like this to kind of get you in the groove, to make sure you're not rambling, to make sure, sure you're not going all over the place. And just, yeah, to make sure that your message is staying on target and on yep. task. And a template, again, originally I was like, I'm never going to do those. I feel like dumbing it down. Yeah. But just seeing the difference that it makes helps you focus more. It ge- it even helps this, the, the sermon writing process because, you know, you're sitting there when you begin. You're looking at a blank page and you're like... Okay, I, got, I don't <laughs> Where know. Where to start? Where to yeah. start? And it's like you already have you already have a mm-hmm. great place to start. It doesn't necessarily make it easier or less to work if you want to deliver a good sermon, but you're not sitting there scratching your head in the beginning, not even know where to start because you've got a template and an outline. And another thing we've talked about too a lot in practical church planning is consistency. Yeah. Whether it's social media, whatever you do, if people can come to expect, I know what these messages the kind of outline, I'm more likely to invite my friends. I know that I'm going to get something from it. I know it's going to yeah. be helpful and help and, and to me. And so again, you, you don't, nothing's worse than like preaching a great sermon and then an awful sermon and an okay sermon. I mean, that's going to happen, but if you can do your best to keep it more consistent, yeah. for people to know what to expect, they're more likely to be engaged in the right sure. difference. Yep. So that's an outline that you can follow. Again, you're going to want to listen to the next episode, episode 33, because yes. we're going to talk about our process. How do we even get this message that I shared? Yep. And how do I include more people than just yourself? And how to, do, to build an entire service around the message. So yep. thanks for listening today. If you've got questions on sermon prep or anything like that, practicalplanning.com slash questions. And we'll see, you, we'll see you next time on Practical Church Planting. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Practical Church Planning, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Practical Planning, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, make sure you like or subscribe or do whatever it's telling you to do or should do on that platform. And hey, if you are so tired of looking at our ugly faces, but you're not tired of listening to our beautiful voices, Mm. then you can find our podcast if you just search Practical Church Planning on iTunes or Google Play. 
Make sure not to just find it, not just to listen, but to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Brian, tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. See you next time.